All right, here we go. 6.5 heating and cooling systems. This one, I promise, going to be super duper short. Now, um, it's just looking at some of the ways that we heat and cool things in our house. Uh, you know, we're looking at the house, the, f the fridge, these sorts of things. And there's a lot of details I could tell you about, but I, I think we're just going to do something pretty superficial. So we're going to talk first about conventional heating systems. There's a picture of a house here, and the idea is there's three conventional heating systems, the ways that we can heat houses or buildings, that sort of thing. And they are, the first one is electrical. Okay, and that's where you have little, uh, they're called radiators, and you have little electric radiators that have a lot of high resistance. You send an electric current through them, and they just, they heat up. That's all it is. Pretty simple. Number two is called forced air. Forced air. And the picture that we have below here, this is a forced air system. So um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, I'll just list number three here. Number three is hot water. And hot water, it's a lot like an electrical heating system. Um, you have what's called radiators again. And instead of sending electricity through them, they're, they're tubes. They're metal tubes. You send hot water through the metal tubes. It makes the metal heat up because metal conducts that heat really well. The metal heats up and then it releases the heat into the air. And so they're usually these, these coils of tubes that fill up with hot water. Um, they all have their advantages, the three different systems. The forced air, there's a picture here, and it's maybe the, the trickiest of the three systems. It's, um, the idea is that you've got air coming through and you can see the air goes in. We've got the outside air intake going in here. The air comes in. We've got a furnace. So there's a inside. There's a there's a fire going on inside. A little fire there. Um, it's heating the air up. Okay. The hot air, as we know, it's uh, less dense. It rises. It goes up into these these pipes. And it's you see it's got this supply. So it's coming in at the ground level. The hot air sort of again it's going to head upwards because it, it's uh, hot. Okay, so that's how the, the hot air gets piped around the house. And then you can see that we have these little return valves. So the cooler air goes into these returns, goes back in, down to the furnace, and it just circulates. So that's the forced air system. The forced part is because we're heating it up, forcing it into the house. All right, that's the idea, ways to heat the house. Um, the next one that we have here, it's the fridge. and um, Oh, I guess we sort of lost the title here. Oh, it went down here. Oh, no. Um, okay, so I'll fix this in the one that you've got here. But in a conventional um, conventional heating systems, conventional heating systems, okay, this is a bit messed up. should say conventional cooling systems up here. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll fix this in your document. Um, all right, so in our conventional cooling systems, cooling here, What we have is what's called a condenser. And if you look at the picture of the fridge here, you can see that the condenser is this series of tubes, this zigzag tube here. And you can see that, um, that the color is sort of changing here. The idea is that we've got, we've got a gas, a special, or a, a special fluid inside of these pipes. So this is our refrigerator. We've got a special fluid running through these pipes. And what happens is that when this fluid gets to the condenser, it is cooled. So the condenser cools the, it's called the refrigerant. Refrigerant. This is the special fluid inside there. And because it cools it, it converts the gas into liquid, and it means that that releases energy. because liquids don't need as much energy as gas. So it releases all the energy, and this, this um, condenser here, this coil of, of tubes, is actually outside the fridge. So if you look at the back of a fridge, you will see this, some sort of coil of wires called the condenser. And it's set outside your fridge so that it can remove all the heat outside of the fridge. 
Okay, and then what we have is you see that the the fluid goes through these pipes. It turns into a um, turns into a uh, a liquid. Okay, and then it's pushed through this expansion valve. Okay, it goes through this expansion valve and then into the evaporator up here. See, it goes up and into the evaporator. And what happens is the evaporator converts the liquid back into a gas. Now that takes up a lot of energy, so this absorbs energy. which cools the fridge. And that's the whole idea. We have this fluid that's piped through here. It keeps on changing from gas to liquid and back to gas. Gas, liquid, gas, liquid. And the one thing is happening outside the fridge, so it's pumping all that heat out of the fridge. And the other one happens inside the fridge, so it's taking heat from the fridge. That's the idea of our, our um, cooling systems. Okay. So that was a bit of a mess. I'm sorry about the formatting here. The last little bit here, how to control heating and cooling systems. So we have thermometers, right? If you look at, um, for instance, at Fieldstone, we've, we've got these little dials that control what temperature to, um, to turn on the heat. And one of the common, one of the classic ways of doing this is, is using what's called a bimetallic strip. And so you can see here this strip, it's this coil of metal, like this. And what happens is that it's actually two pieces of metal stuck together. Two strips of metal, like there's one strip and there's like a second strip and they're glued together, they're sort of attached together. So that the idea is that they have different heat capacities, which means that they're going to expand or contract differently based on the temperature. So we have two different metals, two different metals. Since they're different, they expand or contract differently. So the one on the inside is set to, um, to expand and contract more, more quickly. So it's going to cause it, so there are two different metals that curl when they're heated. They curl because they're expanding and contracting at different speeds. And so what happens is it curls, it causes um, the whole system to sort of rotate, and you can see that, um, that we have this whole system, well, as this curls, it's going to sort of go down this way, which is going to move this whole system, it's going to move this arm here, the arm is going to move in this direction, and what we have here is what's called a mercury switch, and the idea is it's got liquid metal, mercury, which conducts electricity. And the idea is that when it's at a certain level, the mercury connects two contacts. But then as this mercury sort of tips, you can see that the level of the liquid is going to sort of go all to one end. It's going to end up filling over here. And it's not actually going to connect to the metal contact there anymore, so that the switch will turn off. So that's, that's how that works. The last one, the last little topic here is one more way that we can heat and cool houses. We can use what's called a geothermal system. And this just takes advantage of a really cool fact about the temperature of the Earth. This says, the temperature three meters below ground, this is around nine degrees Celsius at all times of year. So all you need to do is go three meters down into the ground and you get nine degrees Celsius temperature. So what you can do with that is you can pipe some water down there and let's say it's winter. You see this first picture here we have winter. There's snow on the house. So we have a whole bunch of cold air inside our house. And so that means that we're gonna, uh, it's going to cool down the water. So we've got cold water. And we, pipe, we just pipe that cold water down. 
We pipe it down until it's three meters below the ground, and then we pi uh, pipe it back up. And because it gets heated up down there, well, it's just going to automatically start flowing back up. It's, uh, it's actually going to mostly take care of itself, but we might need to pump it a bit. Anyway, so our cold water goes down, gets heated up by, um, by the underground, and then it comes back up warmer. And that's great. It's a little free source of warm energy. It doesn't cost us anything. And in the summer, the exact same piping can do the opposite thing. We've got the hot water, because the air is hot now. Our hot water is going down into our system. Here we would need to pump it a bit, so it's actually going to go down. And it gets cooled down, and it comes back up cooler. All right, that's the whole lesson. That's the idea of, um, of, of this... Uh, sorry. That's the idea of heating and cooling systems. You've got homework at the bottom of the page. The video is a bit screwed up, but I will fix your handouts. All right.